So the other day I turned on my e-bike and the e-bike didn't turn on and I started to make a video of it but I never published the video but what was happening was the BMS had shut down the e-bike because cell group one was half a volt lower than all the other cells. All the other cells were perfect at 4.1 volts and then cell group one was about 3.5 volts and I'll try and find a picture of the the cell voltages and I'll insert it here. But, um, so, and it's a BMS on that bike that I've never used before and so obviously at half a volt it won't let the battery turn on which is a safety feature and that's fine. But it's weird that only cell group one was down half a, half a volt and I don't suspect it's the batteries. What I suspect is I suspect the BMS takes its internal power from cell group one. Um, and so since I hadn't ridden the bike in a few months and the BMS was on, I suspect the BMS is what had drained down cell group one. But anyways, in that video, I had hooked this up and I had applied voltage to cell group one through these pins like I've done in other videos. And two things happened. Number one, I accidentally shorted the board on the battery um, because I was using the BMS lead and it was so tight close to the battery that the BMS lead has no length on it. And so plugging this in, I ended up blowing this up and actually cell group one stopped reading. And I ended up do, having to do a repair on this video. Um, and maybe I'll insert some footage of that. Oh, okay. I see the problem. We just blew out the trace. There's your problem. We just blew the trace. Oh, yeah. If, if you look close. I mean, that trace is disintegrated in places. The good news is I can just put a little patch wire from here to here. And then that should repair everything. So let me do that. Okay. I'm going to repair this with a little patch wire. Now I am not a uh, circuit board, I'm no Tronics fix here, so I'm just going to get a patch wire in place. I'm using pretty thin gauge on purpose because um, if I have a short circuit again, I probably want this to be the, uh, the weak link. So I'm just going to tin the wire. Okay. Make sure it flows. Okay. That is fixed. And uh, I kind of want to get some of this blown out copper out of the way, but I'll probably clean up that blown up trace a little bit, put a piece of cap on this and reassemble and this should fix the meter. I'm repairing this, this meter, but anyway, the meter's fixed. But what it did do is rather than trying to um, inject voltage onto certain cells, thought it's time to try one of these active balances. These should um, move voltage from the high to the low cells and balance the whole pack and this moves at one amp which is a pretty good pretty good amount for something like an e-bike battery and so I wired it up onto this breakout which can attach here and then the uh, e-bike will attach here, I'll be able to see all the voltages and I'll be able to monitor in real time what the active charger is doing because we'll see the voltages move as this active balancer is working. Um, I could have wired this so that I plugged it directly into the e-bike, but then I'd really have no idea what was happening and I wouldn't be able to see the individual cell voltages. Now wiring it through my meter here, I'll be able to watch the whole process. And if this works, I might get a couple other active balancers. Unfortunately, this active balancer is specifically for a 13A string. Um, and um, 
so like my power wall, which is an 8S, I won't be able to use this. They specifically say that you must use this on the matching number of strings. So I will have to, I'll have to buy the 8S one if I like this, but these are under $20. So if this does a good job of rebalancing a, something like an e-bike battery, it might be worth just having this and it, like every six months popping out your e-bike battery and plugging this in and, um, uh, you know, just letting the, the pack rebalance itself. Um, one misconception is that the BMS is balancing the pack. Most BMSs only top balance, meaning they only balance when the battery is fully, fully charged, right up at 2.2 2, 4 volts per cell. Well, most chargers actually slightly undercharge the battery to about 4.15 volts. So oftentimes the BMS doesn't even kick into balance mode. Um, so, you know, the BMS is not always active you know, it's not balancing as much as people think it might be balancing. But anyways, let me get on my e-bike. Let's rig this up and let's see what this does and see if it uh, has any effect. Okay, I have this uh, rigged up. You can see how short the balance lead from the battery is, which is why it was easy to short circuit off the side of the battery here. You can see the exposed battery is here. So that's why I blew up this meter. But as I said, it's repaired. And uh, you can see all these cells are in excellent condition except number one. And I really think the BMS is, is actually carrying its, is pulling its voltage off cell group one, which is what's draining cell group one. So I am going to um, plug up this active balancer here. Let me see if I can find something to rest, to rest the meter on so that you guys can see a little better. Okay, let's plug up this active balancer here. And you gotta to remember too that this on this this uh, gauge here, your negative wire goes on the on the right hand side here, and so this my negative wire, which is this one here, will go on this side here. And I did this extension myself, I extended the leads and switched it over to a female so that it can plug onto here. And let's just plug this on. And I can tell you, there is kind of a high-pitched whine going on. Um, there is, yeah, something is making a high, kind of a, a high-pitched electronic sound. Um, so I, I guess it's working. I mean, there must be, it must be BMS. I mean, it must be like MOSFETs or electrical components making the electrical whine. But something is definitely happening. And that voltage definitely jumped up slightly. It was 3.7. It's now 3.851. And we will have to watch and see. We'll have to see if we can figure out which cells. If you look, I think those, I think these cells are coming down slightly. Nope. That just leveled out of 4.17. Drop down. Look, that one is going up slightly. 3.852. It was 3.581. Um, so I, yeah, I think it is bringing up, I think it is bringing up cell group one and it really should mess with some of these ones that are in the high range here. I think it is bringing, yep, yep. That was, that was seven, six and now it's seven, four. So it is bringing down the highs and it should be bringing up the lows. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let this run for a minute and uh, we'll see how long this takes. It's about 10 a.m. So, um, you know, this claims to be a one amp balancer. Um, so we'll see how long this takes to, to bring up the low and bring down the highs. Although it's probably going to take a while because look, it just clicked over to 0.53 up in that top cell. I mean, that's a hundredth of a volt that it that it's moved so uh, I don't think this is going to be a fast process I have to say um, but although now it's jumped up to 5.5 five, so as soon as I start talking crap about it it seems to get a little faster anyways it doesn't matter let me stop talking and uh, let's let this thing do its balance and I'll pop by 
So as you can see, we are nearly done balancing here. The only problem is it's five days later. I recorded the first part of this video on Saturday morning. It is now Wednesday evening. So it's nearly five days later. This thing is not fast. Now, I don't know, and I don't know how they rate it at 1 amp because 1 amp should be able to, uh, you know, balance and charge this entire thing in one day, not five days. But anyways, we're almost done. I'm probably going to let this run one more evening night. You can see with the diff the voltage difference between the high and low cell is 0 0.03. So we're almost there. This is a pretty balanced cell. So this thing does work. And the nice thing is you don't actually need one of these fancy meters to monitor it. This uses the same plug as the BMS cable. So you can actually plug this directly onto your e-bike battery as long as you know that your e-bike e battery is a 13S or a 14S or a 8S, whatever kind of e-bike or a 10S if it's 36 volts. Then you can just um, buy one of these that matches the strings in your battery and you could literally just plug this in leave it for a couple days and you know maybe manually monitor the the battery voltages with a multimeter you really don't need the fancy meter although i love this thing so this does work and it's probably a good idea to you know rebalance uh, something like an e-bike battery once a year you know just let this plug away for a week let it rebalance up it's slow but it is effective um anyway so I don't hate this thing. Um, it's done its job. Wish it was a little faster, but you know, it's achieved what I needed. And uh, you know, so I think uh, we'll call that we'll call that a win. And you know, probably tomorrow I'll put this battery back together and back on the bike, and it'll be uh, perfectly balanced. Thanks for watching.